This is the elm tree which we aired back in tail end of May, and uh, we are in, uh, towards uh, the last week in September, and uh, we are going to uh, take all this off and. Hopefully it will have rooted. If not, I will be in a lot of trouble as it's a big tree and I took the risk of uh, doing this. So we're going to remove the, uh, uh, the, the pot and the wires and uh, see if it has rooted. So we're going to remove these wires and uh, see what's going on in there. I'm not going to cut the wires just in case if I have to pop it all back again. Okay, that is off. And uh, there is still uh, some more wire at this, at this side. I think if I just cut it, what heck. It's rooted incredibly well. Uh, I was very nervous as it's a very big tree and uh, asked whether or not it would take root and I had placed it on a uh, turntable and uh, I was constantly turning it from um, the time it was earlier back in end of May to now. So the roots are quite evenly formed. In the past I've had earlier where I hadn't turn turned it and the roots were all on one side. So we will now remove all the sphagnum moss and uh, get to the bottom of the uh, where the roots are. So we're going to do it sort of fairly gently as uh, we don't want to damage the newly formed roots. Removing the sphagnum moss is a very slow process as uh, the roots have spread throughout and so we're gently having to remove the sphagnum moss without ensuring that we don't touch the roots or pull the roots out. They are very very delicate and uh, small roots. I'm not sure if you can see this and this and this. So we'll continue with this it's, uh, and it is fairly time consuming and we'll catch up shortly when we've made more pro further progress. Removing the sphagnum moss is a very slow process as the roots have gone uh, all over within the sphagnum moss and uh, we're having to sp spray this, the roots constantly as they're very fine feeder roots and I don't want these to dry out and so we are gently going to make sure that they are uh, moist at all times while you're working on it and uh, that will keep it, the spraying, this very fine spray will keep it from drying out, will constantly keep it spraying as we work through the sphagnum moss. We have removed all the sphagnum moss and we had to wet it a little bit as uh, it was proving very difficult to remove and I'm going to give a quick 360. So there's loads of roots here and here all these roots up here and there's a solitary one here and again loads of roots here. We have started cutting the tree to remove it from the base and that is uh, Wojtek, uh, my assistant, giving me a hand with the cutting. We are now at the tail end which is the this part here there's a little another sort of um, a bit of the trunk on this side that needs to be cut and that's the one that we are working on now So 
we have completely severed the uh, trunk and uh, left it off. Here we are and this is going to go into uh, its new pot and we'll keep it here for a moment out of the way and this is what's left of it and I'm, we're going to let it grow and also carve this up a bit at a later stage and uh, this has already started sprouting new growth and we're going to try and get uh, a raft style with uh, what's left in the in, in the bottom and uh, so for now um, we'll just tidy up. I have chosen this rectangular blue pot for uh, this elm and uh, as um, from my past experience elms tend to go well in glazed pots so this is the pot that we are going to put it in. The pot's all been prepared, uh, the um, mesh wire placed in and the wires, anchor wires are already in and we've uh, put a fair amount of bonsai soil in and uh, we'll now uh, place the tree in the pot and uh, in the front, this could be the front or no, we've already carved it here so um, and, and here, so I think this could be the front and uh, we're going to sort of uh, place it like this in the pot but if you could put some more soil and then we'll place it properly finish placing it yeah put on the sides yeah we are now just driving the soil between the roots as uh, we had virtually bare rooted the uh, uh, new roots uh, to remove all the sphagnum moss. It was an incredible amount of sphagnum moss and it took an awful long time and uh, is now being repotted in this uh, blue rectangular glazed pot and just drive the soil between the uh, roots to remove the air pockets and this again is going to be a slow process. We have uh, finished repotting and I'll give it a quick turn and uh, we've managed to get rid of that ugly trunk which was at the bottom before it was air laid and it has lowered the tree into the pot and uh, we've ended up with a fairly decent taper and uh, also um, as I said earlier the ugly trunk is gone it's quite a chunky tree you can see from the uh, from my hand against the trunk it's quite quite a chunky trunk and all that now remains is for us to give it a thorough soak that's a very fine mist spray and uh, give it a thorough soak I was a little bit nervous, in fact very nervous, uh, just immediately before taking the uh, black pot off uh, inside which was the air layer and as soon as the pot came off and I saw those roots going round in the sphagnum moss I was very pleased that it had worked. My track record with uh, air layers has been a bit of a hit and miss and this is quite a substantial tree and I didn't want this to suffer in any way. And might as well give the leaves a bit of a soak. And when it has had enough water it should start coming through uh, the uh, drainage holes and below that is a wooden table with slats and I should be able to see the water coming through.
test the motoring gun in Elm, which uh, we have airlayered and reported. The total time scale from the time of the airlay was last week in May, and we are at the last week of September now. That's four months. Thanks for watching, and to watch more, please subscribe.